Today we'll discuss making splits to grow your apiary. This will include why and when to split, how to split using various methods, and tips to ensure your splits are successful. Learning to split your hives is an essential part of managing your bees. Not only will it help you to grow your apiary, but splitting your hives is the most responsible way to keep bees long-term. This is because if you do not split your hives, they will swarm or split themselves. This is a natural instinct and part of the superorganism's life cycle, meaning a healthy colony will always eventually swarm. By actively splitting the colony, you can ensure that you keep your bees and that they don't end up moving into a neighborhood tree or home. While bees have been known to swarm at inopportune or unseasonal times, it is most common to see this tendency during the growth periods throughout the year, most famously spring. If your hive shows signs of swarming, which often starts with an increase in drone production, followed by making and filling swarm cells, then it is time to split your colony. Springtime is the most ideal time to proactively split your colony. The bees will most likely have an abundance of natural food available to them, making it easier for them to adapt to their split. Beekeepers in southern states will often split in the fall as well, but this comes with higher risks as you approach winter, so it should be done much more carefully. Now let's talk about the key concepts for splitting hives, as well as the most common methods used for splitting colonies with success. Key concept number one, you need to know your resources. Be able to identify the queen bee, nurse bees, capped brood, open brood, pollen, nectar, and honey. You can always reference our hive inspection class to better familiarize yourself with these key concepts, and the slideshow shows each of those as well. To elaborate on how to identify nurse bees since they play an important part of your splits being successful, let's refresh on the honey bee life cycle. Nurse bees will be young bees, meaning they'll be able to produce wax, feed young larvae, royal jelly, and have not oriented to their hive location yet. This means that they're more likely to stay in the new box, even when they get to an age where they begin to forage. Older bees who have been foraging or guarding the hive are more likely to associate the original hive with home. So often they will drift back to that original colony if they're moved into a new box. Understanding this concept can prevent splits from failing and will explain why your splits seem to have fewer bees than you originally put into the hive after a day or so. It's also worth noting that open brood requires more care, so making sure that open brood frames have plentiful bees to take care of that brood is very important. For example, if you're making leaner splits with fewer resources, using an open brood frame wouldn't be advisable. You'd be better off taking a capped brood frame for lean splits. Capped brood will eventually emerge and quickly populate the hive. Of course, the capped brood requires some minimal care, like maintaining a healthy brood nest temperature, so keep this in mind as you look at the weather. Stronger splits will need to be made with cooler days and nights. When you see a ton of capped brood, you'll know that in about 10 days or less, your hive population will drastically increase. This is when you'll need to watch for food stores and availability, as well as space. These young bees will also be able to build comb more quickly, so take advantage of that, especially in the spring, to draw out any undrawn comb. Drawn comb can be a really valuable resource when splitting or starting new colonies. Splits require some thought when it comes to the queen bees. Will you purchase a mated queen from a trusted or reputable queen breeder? Will you allow the bees to make their own queen? Or will you do something in between, like working with a virgin queen or queen cell that will be openly mated in your yard? Some considerations when allowing your hive to make their own queen are, do you like the temperament and other traits of your current queen? Do you have a good bee population to ensure successful mating in the area? Will the weather or season allow for the queen to be successfully mated? You'll want to know what your queen plan is before you get started. We'll be talking about three common methods for splits. One, walk away splits, two, swarm control splits, and three, the do little method for splits. By understanding each of these, you'll get a good grasp of the various techniques you can use to make effective and easier splits. Starting with the walk away split, 
This method is most commonly used as a more hands-off, or dare I say lazy, approach to splitting. In this method, you'll make as even of a split as you can. Some people will just split the colony straight in half. And some challenges you may encounter is bees may drift back to the original colony or towards the queen, leaving one side weaker than the other. Although these are challenges you may see in just about any type of split. It also requires that the bees raise their own queen from larva out of the frames they have. So you need to make sure both sides have access to eggs and young larva. This of course also means that the queen needs to emerge, successfully mate, and return. Having issues with any of these things along the way can always be addressed with follow-up management if problems occur. The swarm control method is great as you gain more knowledge about the bees or get more comfortable finding queens. It's also a great way to grow your apiary because you can pull the necessary resources for the split and essentially split a healthy colony into several starter colonies. Depending on how many resources you choose to give the new colony, you may put this new colony into a nuke box or a full-sized hive. Keep in mind that bees do better in appropriately sized boxes for their population. In this method, you'll have your new hive set up, whether it's a nuke or a full hive, as well as some extra frames on hand. You'll slowly take the resources frame by frame, carefully looking for the queen and placing them into a new colony box or to the side while you continue to go through the box looking for the queen. Once the queen is located, you will place her into the new box, simulating a swarm for her, and ensure that you've given her the resources she needs in the amount that you'd like for the split. In the springtime, you can make splits with as little as one frame of brood and one frame of food. However, most beekeepers will split with more nucleus-sized colonies when looking to start new colonies in a regular hive body. For larger splits, you'll want to watch for the need to add space more quickly. Once you have successfully split, you'll introduce your new queen to the original colony. It's best practice to wait a little bit for the bees to realize they're queenless, although this can take as little as 10 minutes to an hour or so, depending on the population of the colony. And use a cage with a timed or candied release to give the colony time to adjust to her pheromones. Lastly, we'll discuss the Doolittle method, which can be used when you're unable to find the queen or if you're worried about shaking bees or identifying nurse bees. In this method, you'll need an extra hive body as well as a bee brush and a queen excluder. To start, you'll place the extra hive body to the side. You can even place it on top of the hive lid so that it can sit nice and flat. Then you'll slowly take each frame out of the original colony and brush the bees back down into that original colony one by one, getting all of the bees off of the comb and placing each of the frames into that extra hive body without bees on it. You'll repeat this until you've pulled the preferred amount of resources out of the colony. Be sure that you have some open brood in the new hive body. And once you're done, you'll place the queen excluder on top of the existing colony, then place your new hive body with those frames without bees on them on top of that queen excluder. What will happen is that the nurse bees and other bees will begin to cover the brood frames and populate the frames in that top box above the queen excluder. But you'll know that the queen remains at the bottom box because she can't make it up into that top box. You can then remove the extra hive body with the bees and these hives will have equalized themselves a little bit more naturally as well. You can then place that hive onto your new bottom board, add a lid and a queen, and you're good to go. Once you've completed your splits, you'll wanna check back and continue your management while you ensure your success. Watch the brood nest. In the case where young colonies do not have drawn comb, they can easily fill up the comb they have with the nectar and resources they find, leaving very little room for the queen to lay and thus stunting the growth of the hive overall or causing an imbalance in the pheromones and making the bees panic a little bit. It's important with these young colonies to feed less food, 
more frequently to ensure it gets consumed rather than stored in the places where the queen should be laying. If you're able to provide your split withdrawn comb from other hives, then you would still feed according to food availability and the season for whatever the bees need. Keep an eye on the population of the colonies after you split to ensure that they're increasing. If you feel that your colony is dwindling, it's best to deal with that by requeening fairly quickly. Keep in mind the life cycle of the bees and don't make this decision too quickly to see results in the case of a young or new queen especially. But don't let the whole season pass either without dealing with poor performance. If your hive needs a population boost, you can use nurse bees by shaking or brushing them from a donor colony, or you can add capped brood that can emerge in 10 or fewer days. Along the lines of population monitoring, you'll need to keep an extra close eye on queen performance if you allow your queen to openly mate to ensure that she was successfully mated. Watch her pattern as well as for signs of infertility like an abnormal amount of drone brood compared to worker brood or spotty drone brood throughout what would typically be a normal worker brood nest. We wish you the best of luck in growing your apiary. Successfully splitting colonies will make your apiary so much more sustainable. Thank you for always learning with us and be sure you connect with us on social media where we can provide nifty tips and tricks as well as seasonal information in more real time.